Hello and welcome to another edition of Deeper. And it is great to have you with us. It is also fantastic uh, <laughs> to have with me today Dave Griffiths, who is a Christchurch Church Warden. Dave, great to see you. Thank you. Are you excited about this, aren't you? You've been looking forward to doing this video for days. Yeah, I'm like ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, on Sunday, um, I talked about another, uh, actually two parts of our vision, uh, about building community and changing lives, about mission and community. Uh, and just reflecting on where we are with that at the moment, at a time when it's really hard to do both. Um, so. Uh, was there anything that, that struck you in the talk, Dave, that you thought was important or uh, worth reflecting on? If anything... Oh, yes. Yeah, there's quite a lot there uh, worth reflecting on. It was quite good, actually, because it, it sort of enables you to get a little bit real with where we're at at the moment. In other words, that, you know, if we've got problems, hey, we should expect to have problems at the moment with the way that we do stuff and the way that we engage with stuff. Hmm. So the, the digital world and the engagement in the way that we are at the moment doesn't suit all of us, suits some people more than others. Um, you're also fighting against that thing, whereas, you know, uh, say 12 months ago, we were saying perhaps if you've got 50 friends or 100 friends on Facebook, you know, they're not really your friends. Yeah. And, and But now we're having to try and manage with this type of um, um, communication ourselves, yeah. which was unexpected. But but um what one thing that did hit me, and I always do when I, when I read this part of Philippians, it was just a little thing that also struck me. Well. So I'm looking forward to looking into some of those aspects of, of, uh, of what we're talking about. But it was just this, it's the verse where it says, um, being confident of this, that he has started a good work in me, in me will yeah. carry on. So I've not got to be fully done now. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I shouldn't feel, I shouldn't be beating myself up if I'm not getting it quite right at the moment. So, yeah, I, I want to learn a few things through this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, yeah, that, that's a, uh, just that verse alone is a real encouragement to us. And we'll get onto that verse in a minute. Uh, what we would love you to do right now, though, is to read the passage. So, uh, what, why don't you uh, find Philippians 1, verse 3 to 11 in your Bible, press pause and read the passage, and then when you're done, restart the video great i hope you've done it because reading this passage is important as it is every single week uh so we're going to go through this uh just verse by verse and um just pick out anything that we think is interesting in the verse uh and we're going to start off with the simplest verse in there which is uh verse three i thank my god every time i remember you uh dave anything there that you know you you just uh, think is important or want to reflect on? Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, when we think of uh, the people who we know, it's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah. Every time we think of them, to be thankful for them. Uh, you know, do we do that? Um, yeah. That's right. Because <laughs> it goes, you know, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of you. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, in your partnership, you <laughs> think, yeah, that's, um, it, it's quite something, isn't it, to take that in? And, you know, it's important to remember, isn't it, that Philippi was, wasn't the perfect church. No. They had people in it who uh, would have been awkward, difficult, real pains in the neck, just like every other church. And yet Paul says he thanks God for them. Um, and, you know, there's, there's some things there. You know, when you look at the, the kind of the, the bigger picture of Philippians as well, the book, you know, it's, it's quite clear that um, Paul had real affection for them. You know, he, he really did. Uh, and maybe it's because it's one of the churches that he started. It was a difficult uh, mm -hmm. kind of time because uh, he'd been sent there by a vision as in Acts 16. And so um, this whole kind of thing of being led by God, uh, meeting Lydia, who was um, sell at purple cloth. And then the story is that uh, a bit after that, he casts a demon out of a, a girl and gets into trouble for it, ends up in prison, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so the church is birthed in kind of strange circumstances um, and yet is doing really well. And so, uh, yeah, he, he thanks God for them. Yeah, I mean, that's how he starts out. Yet, yeah, bearing in mind, of course, he's in prison. Yeah. 
Yeah. He's in prison. Yet, yet he, every every time he, he thinks of them, he thanks God for them. He, yeah. You know, and and rather than um, being uppermost in his in his situ his situation being uppermost in his concerns, it seems to be other people. Yeah. Yeah. Challenge. Absolutely. That's right. And <laughs> it's quite likely as well that they were going through persecution. Yeah. Um, and so maybe he identified with that because of what he did and the whole kind of casting out of the demon and things, uh, there's evidence that uh, the church were persecuted from that point on. And so, um, yeah, maybe he feels a little bit responsible there as well. You know, the kind of his heart goes out to them. And then he goes on to verse four and five. Uh, it carries on. He says, uh, in my prayers for all of you, I pray with joy because of the partnership that we have in the gospel. And uh, again, you know, that's a, it's a powerful statement, isn't it, about the relationship they had with those people. The, um, the thing about partnership, though, is interesting, isn't it? What do you make of that partnership in the gospel? Well, um, lo looking further into it, you know, when you read on, I think it throws back a little bit onto that one. If you're reading this in isolation, um, in as much as I think he's saying that in actual fact we're all involved in the gospel in the telling of the good news mm. uh, not just Paul because of course Paul was you know we model so much on Paul don't we yeah. Uh, which, yeah. which um, if we expect ourselves to be Paul you know we, we, we're not necessarily expecting um, and it, what's reasonable in some ways um, but uh, he was talking to the ordinary people and saying that we actually do partner in this so, mm -hmm. so um, yeah, I thought I thought that aspect of it is you know quite affirming, really, because it's not just left to Paul. We're all in it. That's exactly. what he was saying. Yeah, yeah, and probably that's another reason why they were getting persecuted. They were probably active in sharing their faith and making yeah, a difference right. in the, the city. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing as well is um, when you read uh, further on, uh, you see that uh, the people of Philippi had sent uh, a person. Epaphrodites uh, and some gifts with him for Paul uh, and Epaphrodites was there to serve Paul and to, to minister with him so they really were sharing in the gospel with them they were saying yeah we support you and what you're doing and uh, identify with it which is a which was a huge statement really yeah yeah and then verse six um just just focusing on that a little bit uh being confident of this, that he began a good work and you will carry on to completion um, until the day of Christ. Uh, that's, that's a great statement, isn't it? That's what you talked about before. Yeah. Just that uh, whole idea of that we're never finished. Oh. And uh, we might not be like Paul, but uh, we can be the best version that God intended us to be of ourselves. When I was uh, prepping for this, um, I discovered that uh, the the words for begin and the the Greek word for complete are both associated with sacrifice. Um, they're kind of uh, there, were, there were technical words used in, for certainly Greek sacrifice, and um, it's those words which made me think about you know like Romans twelve one which is all about you know, us being a, a living sacrifice. Uh, and I guess that the work that Christ is doing in us is that we may be completely sold out for him, that we may be uh, living sacrifices. Is that something that resonates with you, Dave? Well, well it, it, it is um, in as much as um, um, that it's that there's aspects, all aspects of our lives, right? Where we, as we're living the lives, we live our lives because God has gifted us this wonderful life. And mm. that's, he wants us to enjoy these lives that he's given to us. Uh, and, um, but as we live that, if we're following Christ, that there, there are elements all the way through that thread the ways all the way through that, that, that there's got to be, um, to live lives of worship, there's sacrifice within that. Uh, there's, there's 
uh, perhaps putting down of some of our moderating at least some of our own desires teaching our own uh, training ourselves to have desires that are compatible with uh, reflecting Jesus in our lives exactly. and 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 being um, of, of a disposition putting ourselves in a situation where others would see something of that in us even if we haven't said anything to them mm. and that that people will recognize something in us that is um, palatable. That's right. And you know, all too often, especially in this age of, age of kind of celebrity and, yeah. uh, you know, kind of YouTube and Instagram celebs, all those kind of things, it's all about pushing yourself. And uh, here, you know, as Christians, we're meant to be pushing Jesus, that mm. people don't see us, that they see Jesus. And there is, as you say, a huge amount of sacrifice in there. And let's move on to verses seven and eight, um, where Paul again comes back to his appreciation and feelings for the church of Philippi. Um, what, what do you see in those verses? Um, well, again, from the context that he's writing it in, or from the place that he's writing it in, um, I, I read it in um, New Living Translation. Mm. And um, verse seven, the back, the tail end there, of verse seven says, "Bear in mind, he's in chains. He's in chains um, at this time." He said, and in in that translation, it says, "We all share with him the special favor of God. Wow. We share with him the special favor of God." And and I thought, my goodness, um, he doesn't see himself as being in any different situation, though he's in prison, mm. and. Uh, how easy, how much of a contrast is that is using that form of words, the special favour of God, um, to where we're at at the moment, um, socially and, and economically, uh, that we've, we've got to keep a hold of that. Whereas Paul says he always thanks God uh, with joy for these folks all the time. Do we thank God with joy every day at a time that we're that we're in sharing in the special favour of, of God? Um, and there's a training element there. There's really? a training element yeah. for me to tell myself every morning, for us to tell ourselves every morning. Hang on a minute. Today, I'm sharing <laughs> the special favour of God. Yeah. You know. And so all is not lost. All is not doom. <laughs> and we haven't got to fix it all but we're sharing in the special favour of God. And I think that's absolutely tremendous from that yeah, piece. That's right. And you know, I think that applies, especially when, when we come across difficult people within church, that we realise that they also are under the special favour of God. Yeah. They yeah. benefit from that just as much yeah. as we do. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, we see again the, you know, his desire to be with them. I mean, that reading those verses in this lockdown time really kind of rings true for us, doesn't it? But mm. here's Paul. He just wants to be with the church that he founded, the people that he'd grown to love. And, and his desire was to be with them. Yeah, and, and the, the end of verse 8 there where it says, um, God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. Wow, yeah, that's great, isn't it? <laughs> the infection of Christ Jesus. You, you know, um, yeah, we, we, we uh, I wonder whether, I wonder whether we have the affection of Christ Jesus uh, yeah. for each other, e even, even, even the people we like. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but, yeah, it's, it's sobering. It's mm. very sobering in as much as, uh, this is obviously attainable because otherwise we wouldn't be guided in that way. No. Um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, there wouldn't be so much here. Cause of course, Philippians is very much an encouraging portion of the scriptures, isn't it? That's very much um, a, a, a piece of thankfulness, you know, teaching us that, but um, it's not smiling and being nice to each other, is it? This this affection that he's talking about, it's not smiling and being nice to each other. It's a real heartfelt uh, care, real heartfelt care. Exactly. And, and I mean, you could take it even further, couldn't you, that it's, you know, the, the affection of Jesus was always sacrificial because it led him to the cross. Uh, and our affection for each other should in some way be sacrificial. Uh, 
yeah wow a scary thought and <laughs> you look around church and on a normal sunday morning when we had them i think wow you know would i die for these people and and when you look at it you know do i present such a character that they'd die for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point too yeah because yeah. then i mean it is fascinating because when he, he talks about how he prays for him in those final three verses uh he kind of he, he comes into this doesn't he you know because mm. he says my prayer is that your love and i think he's talking specifically here that for their love for each other may abound more and more yeah and absolutely he realizes that's something to pray for it is because it's hard it's yeah, that's that, that is not. Yeah, that's not easy. That's not going to come sort of just by being in that environment, is it? You've got to work at that. That's 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 one lot of work. Yeah, yeah. Like what I said on Sunday, you know, when we do marriage prep and or you know, kind of uh, other marriage courses, we always say, you know, marriage is hard work because any relationship, if it's going to grow, is hard work. You have to put the effort in. It doesn't yeah. just happen. No. And uh, it's like that with church. It is. We want everyone else to do the work. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> and, and shower us with love, but uh, it doesn't work that way. No. Uh, but what Paul prays here, I, I think is really interesting. First of all, he says that your love may abound more and more. And the Greek word there is to overflow. So right. that your love isn't just enough. It, you know, it goes yeah. beyond. Right. Um, but then he says, may uh, abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. And um, I, I, I've been struggling to really get to grips with what he means there. You know, it's 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 a fantastic phrase, and I, I I've been reflecting on it and not really getting to a conclusion on it. But what because normally when he talks about love, he's talking about action. But this yeah. But, but but I I I looked back at this in the light of of um, of, of your teaching on uh, on Sunday, and and looking back. Because I'm thinking we 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 were looking at uh, we need to we need to find out where this is all going, mm. right? We need to ask God, okay, where's this going? How do I need to change and uh, and to be ready for for what's happening now and after the period of time that we're in, and and it, it just jumps straight back to this verse so that we may be able to discern. So we have this knowledge and, and depth of insight so that we may be able to discern. And, and I thought, well, that was so much spoke of, of, um, of what we were looking at there, um, being watchmen, being watchmen. And it's no good being watchmen and asking um, for signs or for wisdom if you've not got the ability to discern it when it comes. Yeah. And I think that's hit me. It's important. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's very important. And... Um, and you know, the, for me, the whole thing as well was about uh, it's no good being a watchman if it's not done out of love. Right. If we're just do, yeah. if we're doing it to be critical, you know, because we know yeah. watching be critical of things, can't we? Yeah. Uh, but if we're doing it out of a sense of love for those with whom we are benefits of, you know, the the favor of God, uh, and for those who don't have that benefit yet, uh, it has to be out of love. We have to be watching with love yeah so we're going to just spend a bit of time thinking about what the uh implications of all of this is uh, and go a little bit wider so uh dave what do you see as some of the application of this passage that we need to take on board think about put into action well, we were talking about um, there from verse uh, verses three and four, really, you know, the the, um, the joy that Paul has uh, in uh, remembering and praying for uh, the folks who he knew because of their partnership in the gospel. And really, at the moment, uh, he was at a distance from the folks that he was speaking to. Um, and he was accustomed to being that in many ways. He visited from time to time, whereas we're used to being together. Yeah. And so we're, we've got the disconnect, really, because of uh, our current situation. And, and it does lead to um, 
because we're doing stuff digitally, it is easy to become a spectator. And I know we have looked at that briefly. But then I thought to myself, well, OK, fine. Am I a spectator? So I started thinking, well, how do I how do I take in? How do I deal with the mm. um, with, with the stuff that we're presented with? So I thought, well, what are some of the what are some of the signs of being a spectator? OK, signs. And now, uh, no doubt, you'll, you'll have with your own, but 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 I've um, I've written a few down here, oh. um, and and um, being distracted easily. When I'm watching something on telly, I can be distracted easily, mm. um, and I'm noticing things. I'll notice if you've moved that book on your bookshelf, <laughs> or or you're looking around for stuff, or and not even that because. I see it as a you you're you're on the you're on my telly performing, mm. right? And so therefore I go, oh, you should have moved that. Shouldn't we could have, we could have? Do you know what I mean? Not not every, not everything's critical. Don't get me wrong. No but no no no. I get it. I get it. The horizon, get it. the horizon is narrow, isn't it? And the other thing is that um, um, do, do a sign of being a spectator. Do I join in with what's with what's being presented? Do I actually engage with it or do I watch it? Do I join in with the with worship? Do I bring my heart of worship when we're when you're when you when somebody's leading or praying? Or am I looking to see how good an orator they are? Because I'm watching it as a performance, which is the way I usually watch telly. I watch performances yeah. on telly. Um, and, and so would I pass comment to Joyce? <laughs> that next to me yeah. but these these are signs of being a spectator aren't they they are you're absolutely right Dave yeah and we've all done it I've done it when I've watched you know uh, other like we've got to do a lot of conferences online that kind of stuff yeah I've done exactly the same thing it's yeah, yeah. too easy to do isn't it so, so you do it if you were there no I yeah. wouldn't no so that's okay it's okay you're being a spectator but now i've got something to start to look at and say to myself okay fine yeah you you may be becoming a bit of a spectator when you when you oops the daisy i've just done something that i said would be a spectator's reaction you yeah. know so uh, but then what's the causes of being a spectator i mm. thought because it's not it's not my you know I, we don't willfully want to disconnect ourselves ideally we would be gathering together physically i would imagine um but then I thought, well, um, if we were physically joined together, the you engage because you're in a group of people that are engaging. Mm. You engage with folks. And, and there's a lot to be said for that because that is community. That is community. Uh, and um, it brings its own environment, brings its own environment. So it's easier to... Uh, get that sense of connection. So I'm sure for yourself, when you're <laughs> teaching on uh, digitally in front of the camera, or you're teaching in front of a, a, a whole group of people, uh, you get uh, you feed to a certain extent from reception uh, and mm -hmm. affirmation of those that are gathered. Yeah, exactly. And likewise, I think that we as a congregation do the same thing. We actually encourage each other by being shoulder to shoulder yeah uh and so therefore we're not necessarily to responsible for the causes of being a spectator but but we but we can actually in recognizing it we can actually start to do something about it yeah. in our uh, missional community um even in that we've gone digital you see yeah so we don't get it at that level either um but but it but it is really important to do whatever we can to have some community with other folks because we can we can encourage each other in these signs of being a spectator, <laughs> and just and just keep each other's uh, resolve up. And I know some folks worry about communities because well they've got busy lives and all the rest of it. And but we um, we encourage each other to uh, be confident that we can speak to the people who we just naturally bump into, the mm. people who we've seen for years or the people who we've met on the dog walk or at the bus stop or whatever, so that we can share something of that, what was it, share with them the special favour of God. 
you know, if they see and we can share the special favour of God, just, just like that, by encouraging each other as a community. And we'll get through it. I mean, commun looking to see where we're going as a community after it's goodness only knows. I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. No. Um, because I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, exactly. but, None of us do. And, and, yeah. No, but if it's down to me, that's too big a worry for me. I, you know, I'm going to pack it in and go home, sit on my own, yeah. you know. Um, but as a community, we'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not down to me. It's that it, we as a community will do it because we're community, because we've got that sense of being together, which gives us strength. It gives us resilience. Yeah. We, we all get on better when we're physically together. And yeah. through things online, like through Zoom, <coughs> uh, we'll always feel second best. However, that doesn't mean that we can't abound more and more in love yeah. through our online connection. So two examples, uh, you might know, I mean, I may have mentioned it once or twice or 10 times that I'm now a granddad. Uh, so I've physically seen my grandkids three times, uh, but see photos of them or videos of them or FaceTime with them, I don't know, four or five times a week, you know. Uh, and I can't tell you how much I love those kids, even though I've only held them three times. Yeah. But because there's the a connection of some kind, you know, you can grow in love for them. Uh, I was talking to a couple uh, who they start going out together just before lockdown. And so most of their relationship has been online. Uh, and there's a thing on radio about all of this, about online relationships. What they've had to do is learn how to talk to each other. Yeah. They didn't just go to the cinema and watch a film and sit in silence. If they were to grow in their love for each other, they had to talk and talk in a different kind of way. So in some ways their relationship is deeper than if they'd been together right person absolutely yeah. So yeah, yeah yeah i think there are some benefits for us doing it online and that's why mission communities are so important for those who are doing it online there's some really important stuff there dave uh i'm going to add one more thing in before we go on to some questions uh, and i think the the other implication is about what it means for us to be living sacrifices and to allow God to complete the work that he's began in us. Um, I think that is something for us to, to keep working on because I, I don't know about you, I mean, it's the old joke, isn't it? You know, we, uh, we, we lay down on the altar some days, say, Lord, take me, take me. And then the next day we get off and think I'm doing it my way. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> we're all in that process. Yeah. Well, our process should mean that more and more Christ is at work in us and Christ is Lord of our life. Mm. And when he's Lord of our life, the two things of both community and giving ourselves to each other in community and mission and giving ourselves to those who are lost in, in sharing the gospel, those two things become easier the more we are given over to Christ. Should we uh, give everyone some questions to think about, Dave? So Dave, why don't you go first? Why don't you share uh, a couple of questions for everyone to reflect on or to discuss in their mission communities? Right, we, we've looked at some of the uh, signs of um, being a spectator, and I'm sure that you have other signs that you can think of that would signify that somebody's being a spectator. I wonder if you can write how many, how many of those you could write down, and uh, and then look at yourself honestly and saying, okay. How many of these am I describing myself with? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and that's not the end of the world, but we can start to do something about it, can't we? Once yeah. we're away. We're all in the same place. We've all done it. So there's no <laughs> guilt here, there's no shame. We've all we're all doing it. So yeah. And and uh, and, and a second question. Yeah. Uh, a second question is um I I through these times may have a tendency in some aspects of my life to hibernate. Um and are you hibernating? Have you basically, ask yourself, have you basically uh, gone into pure maintenance mode? I've just got to get through today. I've just got to get through today. I've just got to get through today. Because then we're not, we're not living that, uh, you know, and experiencing the special favour of God. Wow. Yeah. It's, life's more than that. Because it, even if you're not sure what to do other than virtual hibernation, 
you could then become a watchman. Yes, yeah. It give you, it, that'll give you a real purpose because that'll launch you through the rest of this and out the end of it by being a watchman, but do it in community with others. Mm, that's good. Great, two good questions. Um, I suppose uh, my first question would be, uh, what do you need to do to grow in your love for the people of Christchurch? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and we all need to do that. All of us do. Um, even those of you who are perhaps further on than others, uh, don't get too comfortable. How could you? How can you abound more and more in love for those at Christchurch? Um, my my fi final question would be, and this is a bit more of a general thing. Uh, you mentioned before that you know, like the letter to Philippians was a letter of encouragement. Um, and Paul, in all his letters, encouraged, and he challenged, and all those kind of things. But he, he encouraged. Yeah. Uh, and he was he was a spiritual cheerleader for those he had oversight of. Um, so my question is, who are you a spiritual cheerleader for? Good question. Who are you encouraging, moving on, challenging, uh, inspiring? Who in your life are you a spiritual cheerleader for? There you go, four questions to uh, reflect on or to discuss in your mission communities. Uh, as I said on Sunday, uh, do please join a mission community if you're not already in one. And uh, there's um, information at the end of this uh, deeper video that will help you connect with one if you want to. And as we said on Sunday, you can join one. And if you don't like it and it doesn't connect in some way, then try another one. That is absolutely fine. It's okay to do that, isn't it, Dave? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so have a great week and we'll see you on Sunday and if not join us again for deeper next Tuesday take care now bye